Are you ready for the World War III? Well, I believe that there is no necessity for uh, that. I believe that Ukraine can win this war uh, without entering uh, to the World War III. Well, well, in a hybrid form, in an economic form, in a form of alliances that are built on both sides, it's a, basically, looks like 1937 at least. So it looks like we're at the brink of a wider conflict. And your intelligence, Estonian intelligence, suggested that for the midterm I perspective, you are at risk. Uh, it was this surveillance intelligence report that was I published like two weeks ago, uh, based on the research from from 2022. But how do you feel right now when Russians already started, you know, pushing forward on Ukrainian Eastern Front? Uh, have you changed your perspective, your vision of how close we are to this, you know, rising alerts for Estonia, for the Baltic states? Well, for us, basically, nothing has changed uh, for the mm, many years back when we go, because uh, when you take that, we had this hybrid uh, cyber attack in 2007. Uh, from Russian side towards Estonia, then, uh, you know, we already then saw that uh, there is a huge potential uh, that Russia might uh, poke also or test NATO countries. Uh, so uh, Russia uh, went uh, into Georgia in 2008, to Crimea in 2014. So basically we see that the Ukraine war has lasted already for eight years, even more. And now we're entering to the first anniversary of the escalation of the war uh, since 24th of February. So uh, we know that uh, the biggest threat uh, has always been and will be Russia. We have tried to explain that to our Western allies for many, many years. And uh, now we see that many of them have said that, yes, we should have listened to Estonia and other Baltic states uh, before and earlier. Uh, so this is why I believe that also the Madrid summit uh, statement that Russia is the biggest threat for the alliance is uh, very right and we see also the new steps uh, what NATO is making to protect the alliance but uh, at this very moment of course we all have to help Ukraine to win this war because uh, as was stated also here in, in NATO headquarters uh, many many times uh, today that uh, Ukraine is not only fighting uh, for its freedom and for its people freedom but the Ukraine is fighting for the rule-based world. Uh, Kaya Kalas did this groundbreaking statement uh, almost a year ago, uh, revealing the, um, I would say, the potential weakness of the strategy for defending Baltic states and saying that we cannot wait this 180 days when the, the help would arrive, because uh, we will face another butcher, another, you know, genocide, another massacre of Russians. Uh, have the NATO changed its I pattern, its strategy, uh, its uh, principles on defending Estonia and the Baltic states after Kayakawa's statement and uh, uh, going viral, going public about it. Yes, a lot has changed. So uh, not only the, uh, helping uh, Ukraine, because, you know, many months back uh, there was discussion about the tanks, but, you know, many were speculating that it's too early or we cannot send or something. Now we see that tanks are rolling to Ukraine. Uh, and it's the same also with the eastern flank of NATO. So, uh, yes, there will be a uh, new regional plan, not only for Estonia, but, but uh, regional plans coming out uh, from the Sackers office in April, and we really uh, believe and uh, hope that uh, in Vilnius summit we can approve uh, also on the political level uh, these new regional plans, and these re new regional plans will take into account all the new uh, threats and, and uh, will be based on the threat assessment uh, uh, which was made quite lately and also taking into account all what is happening at the moment in Ukraine. You will not reveal any details of this plan so far before they're approved, or you could give us a couple of hints how, how NATO would step in reinforcing Baltic defense. We see some of the steps already now, and after Madrid uh, there was a clear you know, shift 
uh, to forward defense. And uh, we see that uh, Estonia has uh, made a new roadmap for this year with, uh, together with the UK. Uh, we see new troops uh, from US in Estonia. We have, we have the HIMARS unit, we have the new, uh, new um, battalion coming to Estonia. Half of it is already in Estonia. So we see that the footprint of NATO is much more stronger today already. And obviously, uh, when the regional plans are coming out, uh, this, uh, uh, this will also continue in the same way that, uh, yes, the, the footprint of NATO will be stronger in, uh, in the eastern flank of NATO. And, and as I always said, uh, Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, uh, the eastern flank of NATO is like the front door of NATO. When you close it, then it's uh, quite comfortable to be inside of the house. But when the front door is not locked, then it's uh, a bit difficult to, to live inside. A bit chilly, huh? A bit chilly or also, you know, you are open to the, uh, to the you know, uh, people who are not awaited. Estonia is doing this absolutely marvelous, fantastic job of supporting Ukraine, being a leader per capita for, you know, sending whatever help is, whatever uh, resources are available and needed to Ukraine. Uh, do you plan to send any troops to Ukrainian front line? Well, uh, we all know that uh, this is not something we can discuss at the moment, and, and, and uh, if at all, uh, because uh, Ukrainian people and Ukrainian army is strong enough to fight itself. Uh, what, they, what they need and what you need is uh, the equipment, the training, and, and of course, uh, all that kind of help, uh, what your army is asking from the European allies, from the world allies. And this is something we are focusing at the moment. Uh, also, uh, we are giving in Estonia the training to Ukrainian soldiers. And this is uh, the best help we can give to Ukraine at this very moment. And what I said also here today is that, you know, we can do all more. Uh, even when we double the efforts, uh, what has been done by, uh, so far, then we could uh, only go up to 100 billions. When we take the same share, what Estonia has done uh, helping Ukraine, then this amount could be 500 billions. Uh, as, and when we take the same GDP per capita. So uh, there is a huge potential also for the Western countries still to, to put more uh, help to Ukraine. This Rammstein meeting, what was, I uh, really knew there, what was the groundbreaking news, if there were any during this hours when you spent with your partners and with the Ukrainians as well? Well, we had more contributions three weeks ago, and now we have to deliver these contributions, what we made three weeks ago. Uh, also, Estonia announced their uh, our like biggest uh, shipment uh, so far, uh, altogether 34 howitzers, if I remember correctly, and uh, some ammunition, etc. So this uh, is exactly what we now to do. What, what we have to do now, we have to deliver all these pledges we made three weeks ago and uh, still continue to find the ways how to help uh, with the most critical needs. One of them is air support, uh, air defense. Is there a chance of accord with the NATO right now, today, tomorrow, to get the jets, to get a F-16s? It was not on the table today. Uh, so let's see uh, how the things are developing. Uh, one thing what we see is that when we are giving, and what was said many times today, and what is, of course, uh, ob very obvious, that when we give something, that we are not giving only the assets or equipment, but we need to give capabilities, which means that you know, you, when you send, let's say, a tank, then you need also to provide uh, training, uh, maintenance, uh, spare parts, etc. So, so we, uh, you, you cannot take just one tank from the stock and send to Ukraine. It will not help Ukrainians. So which means that it has to be a full like chain of, of uh, equipment, uh, what will come together with this decision to send some new uh, assets. I totally roger that. Uh, but when you say today, you mean today and tomorrow. So this Rammstein, this uh, defense minister session would not bring F-16s, am I correct? Uh, 
it's difficult to to state that uh, on the final stage but uh, i believe that at this very moment we are more concentrating on on that that uh, how we can increase the, the number of uh, trained people or the trainings how we can increase the uh, and speed up the training of the uh, tank uh, personnel how we can speed up these deliveries would have been uh, done already by the governments. So, uh, yes, Estonia has sent the howitzers and, and in the coming weeks we are sending the extra howitzers. But now it's very important also that these pledges, with, with uh, what have been made, that these pledges will also uh, be implemented, that they will end up in Ukraine as soon as possible, that we are not wasting the time. And this is why, you know, at the moment it's more critical for Ukrainian forces to get this help with w which has been decided already. On air defense, I, I mean, definitely we'd need more patriots and more air defense, taking into account the Russians are still trying to use this uh, scorched earth, earth strategy towards infrastructure, power grid, everything. Uh, were there any solid uh, you know, big shipments discussed these days? Uh, to really boost Ukrainian air defense? Well, there are many air defense uh, capabilities which are still not sent to Ukraine. So uh, this is why we, uh, as, as I said, this is why we need to speed up. Uh, so uh, there are different ones, you know, Hawks uh, and, and some others which have to be still delivered. So this is why, you know, all the countries who have said that they will send air defense also have to deliver this. Uh, and, and of course, we are looking for the you know extra options that can we uh, can we like homologize or do something that you have let's say the books or uh, some other air defense systems, and we can use maybe some assets, Western made assets, uh, to to use also additional uh, additionally these equipment uh, this equipment what you have at the moment. I know that you're skeptical about I. Sanctions that could I, stop Russian military production or break it back. Uh, but um, at least you said that a few months ago. But when we look at Russia's production now, and when Ukrainians look at that, it seems like there may be loopholes, for instance, with titanium and with the other stuff that is needed I, for them to boost their military production. Are you looking uh, at the other options to stop shipments of these kind of goods that could be used for military production? For instance, titanium, Russians are buying it from China, but not only from China. So can we like look into this issue a little bit and uh, give some more details? All these loopholes have to be closed, for sure. <laughs> and, and all the countries have to, uh, have to you know, uh, look very closely what kind of goods are going through their own countries and uh, to where. And definitely these sanctions, what are in place, they have to be also uh, executable. Uh, which means that, you know, uh, every new sanction we put in place, uh, it has to be also effective. And uh, I really hope that also on the European level and uh, together globally, we can uh, find the new ways how to affect Russian economy in order to uh, reduce their possibility to feed uh, Russian army uh, with, with uh, what they need. Well, the, these things discussed uh, during these sessions, these meetings uh, here these days in... Um, I said that, yes. I said that clearly that, you know, that we have to, uh, we have to put new sanctions and, you know, new offensive spring, if I may say so, also on the, on the sanction level, uh, because uh, this is very important and, uh, you know, uh, we see already the decrease of the Russian economy. We see that they are eating already their own reserves. Uh, this is all what we see from the Russian economy. But uh, nevertheless, uh, we all know, especially Estonia and Ukraine, we all know that uh, even when Russia go to uh, uh, minus with their economy, and then uh, they, it, it doesn't bother uh, Kremlin or Putin to make uh, these military decisions. NATO is still reluctant, to say the least, to even mention the possibilities of Ukrainian membership. I, is it moving anywhere? Is there, because with the guarantees, uh, without the membership, uh, Ukraine would never feel 
I really accepted to the club, being basically the spearhead of that club already. But is this discussion moving anywhere uh, now in NATO ahead of the Vilnius summit? My advice is very simple. Let's try to win this war uh, first, uh, because this is the most important uh, task for all of us at the moment. And, and as was mentioned here today many, many times, that uh, you know, Ukraine uh, is fighting for all of us, and Ukraine is fighting for the rule-based world. So uh, this is the goal number one. When we achieve this, then we can take the next steps, you know, because when, when you're focusing to mo too many things, you cannot be successful in all these efforts. So which means that let's focus at the moment to winning this war. Thank you, sir, for your time. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Have a great day. Hopefully we'll meet again soon. Thank you very much. Thank you.